the faith. Hello, critics, non-critics, and friends. Welcome to the Film Optics Podcast, brought to you by the Drive-In Podcast Network, where we discuss film, TV, and all things Hollywood. I'm your host, Christian, and I'm joined by my co-host, Devin, the man himself. And in this episode, we're going to be discussing the latest and greatest Disney Plus series, Star Wars Visions, and we're also going to be reacting to the 73rd Emmy Awards, the 2021 Emmy Awards that happened yesterday. We are recording this on a Monday. And before we begin today's show, you can listen to our podcast on platforms around the internet. And if you're a new or seasoned listener to the show, we would love to hear from you guys. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Film Optics. Again, that is Optics with an X. Happy, 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 happy Monday, Devin. How are you doing today, man? How was your weekend? It was a pretty solid weekend. How was yours? It was good. Very, very chill. Uh, we suffered a huge loss um, of the Steelers, unfortunately, to the Raiders. But, um, you know, it is what it is. And I just, it's just a little bit of a sad, sad trombone. Pro- yeah. yeah. And it's raining here a lot, too. It's, we've been on flash flood warning since, like, Friday. <laughs> but what did you do this weekend? Do anything fun? Chill? Just hanging out with the boys. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> we went out we went out to a bar Saturday night. I didn't know they had that in them. Oh, really? Really? I didn't yeah. know they had bars in Cleveland. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> good old good old Cleveland. Yeah. Which bar do you go to? I don't know if I honestly even know it. It was in Coventry. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I've been down that way a few times. One of my uh, great aunts used to live over a little bit off of Coventry uh, herself. So, yeah, it's it's a good time. But, yeah, nothing too crazy over here. I've been watching a little bit of Midnight Mass. So we're definitely talking about that later on in the week. Uh, Pretty much other than that, uh, watch Dear Evan Hansen. I got an early screening to that. So that was uh, very, very uplifting in a way. And other than that, yeah, I kind of, um, well, watch the Emmys, of course. <laughs> well, I did. I don't know if Devin did. <laughs> I did. I had did it on the you? second screen. Oh, you got you, you the dual screen monitor. That's right. That's right. I I mean, I watched, you know, the Steelers game and went out to the bar with a few friends and then came home and just, you know, chilled the rest of the, uh, the late afternoon into the evening and watched the Emmys. It was just, you know, chilling. Chilling like a villain, I guess, but <laughs> it is what it is. But yeah, so as we stated before, first we're going to kick things off with our Star Wars Visions reaction. That by the time this will be out, technically this will be out the day before. So, um, slight, uh, wow, let me start that over. <laughs> so, by the time this is out, it'll be out the day before Star Wars Visions drops. Um, so that would be, yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to give our not, you know, our, our initial reactions and we'll get into a little bit of spoilers, but I feel like we can give this a little bit more spoiler free. It just depends on how much Devin that makes is. it easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> Devin's like, eh, the, the less he has to talk about it, the better. So that's all right. But we'll be right back. We're going to start our review of Star Wars Visions right after the short break. Long ago, a great warrior came to this village and entrusted our ancestors with this. Its power and responsibility now lie with you. And we are back with our Star Wars Vision review. Mm, man, Devin. So before we begin today's uh, review of Star Wars, really, really quick, I uh, wasn't really able to find a list of directors. Well, I was, but there's, it's like nine different studios or yeah, nine different studios with seven episodes all together. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a, it, it's a bit of a mixed bag. So I wasn't really able to kind of, 
you know, get the writers and directors, but some of the um, English casting, we have Alison Brie starring in the show, um, Andrew uh, Kishino, Jaden, and Jaden Waldman as well. And the story is as follows. The Star Wars anthology series that will see some of the world's best anime creators bring their talent to this beloved universe. And of course, you know, you can check on Rotten Tomatoes, check on IMDb, look up some more information about it if you guys like to. But yeah, today we're here just to kind of give our first initial thoughts. Um, I might go into a little bit of spoilers later on, but you will he- hear this uh, little boy here. If if we do, you know, we'll, we'll give you a nice little uh, warning there. But yeah, um, gosh, oh God, I'm, I'm afraid to ask Devin what his initial reactions are. But the, I'm, so I, I, I texted you. I was like, man, this is like a double whammy for me because I tried to get into animated Star Wars. Just couldn't do it. Gave it multiple tries. And I've never been a fan of anime just in general. So this is just like double trouble. Just <laughs> not up my alley. Not up any of my alleys except for the Star Wars alley, I guess. But. Mm, not the correct I gave it a thing. shot. I gave, I gave it a fair, a fair <laughs> shake. He did. I, I will say that Devin definitely did. Like you said, he's not a big, he's not a, he, he's a big Star Wars fan, but he's not a big anime fan. So it's like, it, it was really tough sell for him. And I have to applaud him for actually watching it. Cause I didn't think he was going to, I was very, very afraid. I'm like, well, some were easier to get through than others. <laughs> well, it was it because of the runtime or was it because of the actual, story? well, all the runtimes were short, which is, which definitely helps. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. I guess it just depends on how you look at it. Um, but I this guess feels, this feels like, like a legitimate experiment for them. Not like the, the dumb, like Shang-Chi way that they called it an experiment, but this feels like an actual experiment. Right. Just giving studios like a chance to kind of throw out a Star Wars story that they might have had in their in their wrapping around in their brain. <laughs> Almost as if it's fan service. No, I'm kidding. It it definitely doesn't feel like fan service. And that's what I like about it. Cause the these are stories, you know, throughout the universe that are told in you know, these small little pockets of the universe, as I as I like to say. And I I kind of um I tweeted about it as well. I mean it's it's a pretty super positive tweet, but as I mean I was excited, you know, this this is Star Wars. This is anime. These are two things that I absolutely love. And granted, I haven't really watched a lot of anime as of recently. Like there's, I mean, I'm, I'm always going to watch like My Hero Academia, things of that nature. And, you know, I always had a really, really great time um, with all of that. But it's, it's, it is a lot of fun um, talking and just t- talking about Star Wars. Not, not only that, it's just witnessing Star Wars in a different fashion in a different way you know you you have very different very yes very very different and i'm actually trying to find my uh initial reaction oh here we go so on twitter i kind of posted i said star wars is the most ambitious star wars series to date which i do find to be true because it is so different and this like devin said this is this does seem like lucasfilm taking um, you know, the experimental route without saying it's experimental and, you know, continuing on, continuing on, I say that it's has some of the best stories that the franchise has to offer, especially one of them that we're definitely going to talk about here in a little bit, uh, telling tales from multiple pockets, um, in the galaxy spell success for star Wars. I do think that they have something here that they can move on with. You know, this is more, I feel like this is more of like a rough draft, in a way. And I go on to say, I hope we see more from these creative studios full review coming soon, you know, all that, all that jazz. But uh, that, that is something that I, I do agree with, you know, like, I don't think it's perfect, but I do think it is very, very ambitious because, you know, these are just, it's, it's something different for star Wars. It's just finally something different. There is no Anakin Skywalker. There is no Darth Vader. There is no Luke Skywalker. Uh, there are a few, um, you know, familiar faces here or there, because, you know, this is a wide universe. You're going to run into small little, you know, fam- uh, familiar faces, um, around, um, around the bend, but they're like, no one here is a Skywalker. No one here is a Papa team. These are just, their own stories and that's what i really really liked about it so it's like yeah it's definitely refreshing to have everybody be related and kissing each other <laughs> definitely man and you know it's in you know we have 
so many different art styles here. I think, you know, it's, there's so many, like, not even, like, the art styles themselves, I guess what I'm trying to say is that they they really echo a lot of things. They're, like, the first episode is more so of, like, a Kurosawa type uh, feel. And then you kind of have, like, the Mega Man Astro Boy feel later on. And then um, also, my gosh, there's one, um, I think it's the, with the twins, that style rem- reminds me more of Gurren Lagann, which is an uh, anime. Um, it's a limited uh, limited series anime, but it, it's pretty freaking good. But the, the art styles definitely pay homage to different types of uh, mediums out there. But it, I mean, just just the, uh, the the lightsabers and you know the the way how they you know identify a Jedi and a Sith, and some of these characters are neither. Some of them clearly are, but it's like. These are some of the coolest lightsaber designs we've ever seen, like ever, ever. But it, it really does blow my mind. But yeah, because they they never really go into too much detail of the process of creating and like like assembling and like finding a lightsaber in the movies. Yeah, like there were so many Kyber crystal mentions in the series. Like just going through the process of what it actually takes to get one and be worthy of one. Right. And that usually harkens back, um, for, at least for for me, with uh, Knights of the Old Republic uh, one and two, especially with the uh, the first game. How they they kind of explain how lightsabers are created, and you know what goes into creating a lightsaber. So I'm really glad that they are starting to kind of go into that because literally every single episode here is about some type of Jedi Sith or some light saving light saving, excuse me, light saber wielding uh, being in some way, shape or form. And yeah, I guess, uh, I guess we should just talk about the main lightsaber episode, which is, I know it's your favorite. I will say it's mine too. The, the ninth, ninth Jedi. The ninth Jedi. I, t- I told you Devin. Oh my gosh. So did you, did you hear a special voice in there? Uh, I want to say yes, but no, at the same time. I think I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember. We might have to talk about it. The, 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 the man creating the lightsabers. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I read about this. I think I know what you're talking about. I don't want to say it on the podcast. It's for everyone to kind of figure it out on their own, but we'll definitely talk about it afterwards <laughs> for sure. Um, but yes. Um, so did you, did you want to get into spoilers or I, I feel like I, I feel like we can go either. I mean, way. We can just we can just keep it pretty pretty okay. vague here. Okay. But it's so just, yeah. there's a lot of twists and turns. A lot of twists and turns. There's, it's a it's just a cool journey of a simple lightsaber delivery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it really is, and I think with the ninth Jedi, I believe it's episode six. I can't remember which episode it actually is. They're all in different order. Are they on the app and on IMDb? <laughs> <laughs> well, on the app, let's just go that way because I believe that is the correct um, the correct way. But it is called the Ninth Jedi. It is the longest running out of all of the Star Wars uh, Vision um, episodes. So it's twenty one minutes, I believe. The shortest one out of all of them. Are, there's a few short ones in there. They're about. 12 minutes, I believe they run between 12 and 21 minutes, which some people can view as a good or a bad thing. You know, they feel like it, it really just depends on the story that's being told for some of them. I feel like it does a really good job of telling of these super small scale stories, but for some, for, for others, I feel like it is very, um, yeah, I feel like they can go somewhere with this, you know, especially with the ninth Jedi. Like that is, Oh man. Oh man. Absolutely, like that twist, everything. I was like, this is yes, like this is 100 percent pure Star Wars. And I believe the one with the with the girl bunny, I forgot the name of it. That was, I think that was probably my second favorite one. That was like towards the end. I think it was like episode like seven or eight. My second favorite was Tatooine Rhapsody. Tattooing Laps Rhapsody was really, really awesome. I believe that was that one also had a really good voice cast. Yeah, it really, really did. And the, just just the story that it told was just very, you know, like I said, small scale, nothing too grand. Um, some of them did feel a little bit too not over the top, but I think the twins 
That one was very. Uh, I wasn't a fan of the twins. You were not, Devin. Why not? No. What? I don't know. Ugh. Okay, so you watched these um, in English, correct? Unless you, you know, I, I'm not. Well, sure. except the first one, I didn't get any <laughs> any options. I will see in in that screener app because I had to shift through because I was like. I'm like, okay, it's speaking in Japanese, but there's no subtitles. What's going on? And I had to go. I'm like, okay, you can actually change them, which is nice. So I, I got like halfway through the first one and then I rewinded it and played it with English subtitles. Um, but that is another thing I really do appreciate about this, um, about this series is that they do have English subbed and dub titles uh, for those who prefer, you know, English or uh, Japanese Honestly, I do plan on going back and rewatching all these in Japanese because I feel like it would just give it more of a quote unquote authentic feel and just a, a different feel overall. Because I watched both. Um, they released two trailers. They released one, released one in Japanese and one in English. And as much as I do love the one in English, obviously, obviously, because that is our our native language. Um the Japanese one just it's just it hit different. Like I don't know why, but maybe that's just, you know, the the weeb in me coming out being like, oh my gosh, you know, like this is fan freaking tastic. But I really do appreciate how they um how how they're giving people a choice of how to experience uh this anthology series. But uh, man, do you want to talk about Ninth Jedi or do you just wanna <laughs> I mean it's just it's perfect, dude. I I loved it. It feels like it sets up. I feel, I feel like we should we should let people get to it. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. According to IMDb, is the last episode. It's not okay. So from the from the from the app, it's not. I know that. I mean, we weren't on Disney Plus watching it. Oh no, we weren't no, no. on Disney Plus watching it. Right, but I want. I so wonder if that's. I don't know be, which order would be right. Yeah, I wonder if that's just going to be the the same order because anything else we watch through the app. I mean, even with like Marvel stuff. I mean, it would make sense for the ninth Jedi to be episode nine. It would make sense. <laughs> Save the best for last. Cause I definitely feel like that was the best one uh, for sure. But yeah, like there's, you know, there, there's so many out here and there, there's going to be a favor for everyone. 100%. I think, I think the worst for me was uh, the, the Toby one. T O B one. That was the, like the Mega Man that one vibed was like way out there. The, yeah, it like looked the like style on that one was like the Mega Man like Astro Boy type one. Yeah, yeah, that one was. Um, I I liked the aesthetic. Um, it was just a super super short story. Like it, it almost felt like an. I mean, it literally felt like an animated short at that point. But um, I wish we got like a little bit more. Um, just a little bit more context to the story itself. But like I say, you know, it's an anthology series. Like all these are completely different, which is something I really, really appreciate. Um, I'm trying to figure out maybe that was my least favorite one or man, I'm trying to think. I, I want to say it might've been that one, but I really like the aesthetic to it, but there, there was, wasn't much to go on. Like, substance or con uh, context wise but yeah so I, I i think i would have to agree with you there I, I would have to go back and rewatch them but i think i'm just gonna wait for them to hit disney plus again um just to like you know get rid of like the watermarks and stuff because <laughs> that can kind of get a little distracting but yeah you know you kind of live to learn uh learn to live with it but yeah uh anything else you wanted to kind of talk about or any pros and cons at all i, I mean i feel like we've kind of grazed over everything enough for you know spoon fed everyone enough to at least watch it because it definitely is worth it um like, like i said um, i just wish some of them were a little bit longer but as devin said it you know this could serve more as like a test series i really want them to do a season two like i really really do i don't know if it's going to be like more of the same like getting different japanese studios to do, to do this or the same ones kind of continuing the same stories maybe which would be really really cool but um yeah uh, did you have any other last uh thoughts before we get into scores and move on here yeah i don't think i had anything else to add all right you want to get into scores so I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this a solid, I'm I'm going to give this like a solid B plus. I don't think it's, you know, like the best thing in the world, but I 
like I do stand by what I said. I do think it is very ambitious for Star Wars. It's different. And that is all I'm asking. That's all I'm looking for. That's all I'm looking for in the Star Wars series is something different. And that is what this series has given me. So I, like I said, I wish a few of them will be a little bit longer and I hope they do a season two. We'll love to see them continue possibly in the same stories or do something different uh, in season two or have a little bit more structure for season two. Um, really hope we see more of the ninth Jedi because that really feels like it starts off on a grand adventure. Um, and that's all I'll say, but yeah, I'll give it like a solid B plus. What about you? Well, I feel like my score should have a giant asterisk next to it, but <laughs> I'll go with like a, I'll go with like a 68. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Fair like, enough. I, I, mean, I found, found a few of them pretty decent. Mm. A few of them I didn't, I didn't enjoy too much, but. They were nice and quick, so it made it easy. Yeah. <laughs> Devin was like, well, they're not too long. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, I guess I'll, I'll. You can honestly breeze through all of these in like an afternoon. Like just watch all of them back to back to back to back to back and move on with your day. And it doesn't feel over encumbering. It doesn't feel, you know, like if you're watching like a TV show that's like 10 episodes an hour long, you know, feel like you got to take a break in between. Like you can really just blow through this in like an afternoon and be totally fine and you know, kind of assess your own situation with what you're, uh, with what you're feeling with all of this. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> that's it for our star Wars and visions review. And, oh man, up next on the docket, Devin, we have the 73rd Emmy awards coming up. We're going to be talking about all the winners. We're going to, we're going, yeah, let me talk. Yeah, let me start that over. <clears throat> And that concludes our Star Wars Visions review. You heard it here from me and Devin ourselves. I give it a B plus. Devin's going to give it more of a 68 with an asterisk. I'm I'm guessing more so like on a C minus side for him, for him. I don't really know. Maybe sure. he'll go. What's up? Sure. Sure. <laughs> or six, 68 isn't bad. I mean, for someone who doesn't really enjoy anime, I, I think you did a really great job with, you know, blowing through the series and, you know, talking about it here on the podcast, but we're going to be right back coming up next. We have our 2021 Emmy award reactions right after the short break. All right. And we are back with our reactions of the 2021 award Emmy awards, excuse me. We're going to be talking about all the snubs. We're going to be talking about all the amazing. Um, uh, how do I even say just, just the overflowing of energy. It really felt like people were happy just to kind of be out in the world again. Uh, Seth Rogen made a, a slightly joking, not so joking, you know, <laughs> Uh, speech there towards the beginning, which I feel like he wasn't joking at all, but uh, it, it has been a crazy ride. Honestly, a great, great year for TV in 2020 uh, for all of you out there who, who don't know. It's, it's just TV has been thriving more so than anything else. You know, like we, of course, we always talk about movies here on the podcast. That is our guess you could say like our main bent bread and butter, but you know what TV is too. Cause we, we kind of go back and forth between both of them and we love to show, we love to give them equal attention because honestly it's, especially with Disney plus, you know, you got to watch the TV shows and you got to watch the movies to understand everything that's going on. But we really just enjoy talking about both. And you know, it's, it's, it's just a great time to, to be alive, to, to witness of uh, things like this. Um, and like I said, you know, the Emmy Awards were last night and, uh, you know, me and Devin um, sat down, you so socially distant a few miles away and <laughs> kind of just uh, just basking the glory. You know, we got to see all the stars dressed up, looking nice, you know, just coming out for just celebrating a great, great year of TV and, you know, uh, acknowledging everyone's accomplishments and whatnot. And before we begin, I just want to let you guys know, you know, like, I know there was a few snubs in there um, here and there, you know, people have been talking about online, but just because your favorite show or actor or actress did not win an Emmy does not take away from the 
um, the hard work and it, it doesn't take away from, you know, just, just the overall, like it doesn't take away from the show, like whatsoever. Like there, there's plenty of shows out there that, you know, I wish I would have gotten a little bit more attention during the Emmys, but you know what? There's still a great show at the end of the day. It's just an award show. You know, we're going to talk about it. We're going to have some fun here and we're just going to have a grand old time, but I mean, it's also just a very flawed system in general. Yeah. The, the idea that this Academy has the time to watch thousands of, of episodes of all of these shows, all of these shows. Possible. It's a lot of shows. <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely, I definitely agree with uh, Devin there. It, it doesn't make their work less important is what I'm trying to say. You know, no, regardless of who won and who didn't like, like Devin said, it is, it is just outlandish to actually think, to actually believe that these people, you know, the, the, uh, the Academy, um, actually sat down and watched all this stuff because we, we, if it's not happening for movies, you know, as sure as heck, it's not happening for TV. (laughs) Yeah. Way more time consuming for TV. 100%. But, Oh man, Devin, I just wanted to get your initial reactions, just your overall thoughts about how the night was, how the pacing was, you know, you know how they love to throw on those little jokes and whatnot, but just, just give me your overall thoughts before we get into, you know, the, the nitty gritty, the, uh, you know, the, the awards, the snubs and all that juicy goodness. Yeah. As far as my thoughts on the ceremony, I thought it started off like really well, like that first <clears throat> intro where they did, um, the Biz Marquee song and had everyone just kind of singing along. Like that was an amazing start just get, like in his honor and just everybody get up and get into it get some energy going mm. but then as it goes on the, the show just kind of deteriorates with these uh these sketches and skits that they have pre-recorded and forced into this into the show it's it's the same complaint for every awards award show it's just it's just not necessary because it just really makes everything like it just bogs everything down and they're always just like two or three minutes with too long for what they what the joke was like it just kind of makes it drag on for so much longer it feels like because it's already a three-hour ceremony like you don't need to add on these these five-minute sketches <laughs> where there's like a couple of decent jokes and then the rest is just awkward and just doesn't land yeah i I, and I do i do like such the entertainer too I, I don't i don't blame him at all like it's just the material he was given just as the night went on just kept getting worse i feel like yeah, you know, and and time means everything when it comes to these award ceremonies. I will say, I think the Emmys had a way smoother sailing than the Oscars did. To be completely honest, yeah, they didn't mess up as bad as the Oscars, right? I mean, there, there's always going to be that one big thing where it's like, oh, you know, how could you know how how could the Academy Award you know do this for you know for the Oscars for the Emmys even for the Golden Globes? But that's kind of um, you know set sail for a while for the Golden Globes. I think they're. They're uh, backing off on that for a while, but yeah, I, I do agree with you. Um, it, it definitely started off really, really strong. Um, as the night went on, it definitely started to lose its pacing here or there. Uh, there was like, there was one sketch that I liked as Cedric the Entertainer did. And that was the, um, the, the never like when like an Emmy, like, or, yeah, that, yeah. that one was pretty good. But yeah, that was pretty one, funny. Once again, it just went on just a little too long. Yeah, and I feel like, like by that, do. yeah, I feel like th- by that point, you know, with Kim Jong and you know, like oh, you know, that one was really rough. Yeah, the it's, Kim Jong joke they put in there. Oh, yeah, I mean, I I understand, you know, they're trying to connect with the audience, but it's like people need to understand, you know, with with these, you know, with these stars, these celebrities, they are living in a totally different world than we are. Like one hundred percent, they like not saying that they don't have you know, their own personal issues that they deal with. Cause they definitely do. They're still human, but it's, it's, it's more like the humor between us, normal folk, I guess are us common folk here in, in the world. And you know, the stars out there are just, are, it's totally different. And I mean, who's to say that, you know, a lot of these celebrities even really liked a lot of the sketches, you know, a lot of them, you know, everyone has to pretty much be there. Who's, you know, made a TV show in 2020 with who were, who were nominated at least. And 
It, yeah, it's some of the jokes just don't really land. I really don't know who's writing all this stuff. Like, I get it. You know, it's there to be entertaining and funny. You know, you want to goof around with the stars and whatnot. But it's like, honestly, sometimes you kind of just want to know who won and, you know, go home. Like, have, like, one, like, sketch that lasts, like, five minutes. Like, a, a nice little intermission sketch or something. Like you said, it's a three-hour long ceremony, which is honestly... I feel like they can do it in like an hour and a half if I'm being completely yeah. honest. Like they can shave off a lot, a lot of that time, but Hey, you know, I get it. It's for a viewership and whatnot. And I actually wanted to touch on that really quick with the viewership. I really like how they, they handled everything with CBS. If you had Paramount plus you're in the clear or any streaming service that offers CBS you were in the clear. Everyone was able to watch it. It wasn't like the Oscars a few years ago where here in town, I wasn't able to watch the Oscars because of where I live and CBS had some kind of disagreement. So I wasn't able to watch it via the internet unless it was like through YouTube TV or some other super, super premium streaming service I had to pay for. I pretty much had to go out and buy like an antenna for my TV, which, which I was not going to do. But I really, I, I like the accessibility. Everyone was able to watch it no matter, pretty much no matter, no matter where they were. Obviously, it was on cable as well. So I just wanted to congratulate, <laughs> congratulate the, uh, you know, the Academy for kind of just making it smooth sailing as inaccessible to as many people as possible. I really, really enjoyed that. But um, yeah, pretty much going off of that, you know, it kind of gave our little feel of what we think. About the uh, and I was and I was, actually, I was actually just curious on viewership, so I just looked it up. Oh. It looks like hit us with those numbers. Um, the, the number is seven point four million viewers on Sunday, mm. which is actually up uh, from last year. Yeah, up sixteen percent from last year. Nice, not bad. But it's still overall down thirty four percent compared to that to the Oscars. Year. How much was it? I wonder. That's interesting. I wonder. I wonder. Well, more I know. People- I, know um, I know. Compared to MTV, <laughs> MTV Movie Awards, <laughs> I know that got under a million. Oh, did it really? Did you? Li- I don't know if you heard on the last uh, LCB podcast, but they were talking about it. Under a million viewers. Under a million viewers. That's insane. Yeah. I see. I I, I got to catch up on LCB. I got to catch up on Nerd Soup. I've been. It was uh, so busy. It was, it was uh, Triple Ballins last episode. Oh, see, yeah, I de- that's I definitely have to check that because I forgot this right. He left. He did leave. That's right. I definitely have to check. So that out. this the Oscars this year hit a new low of ten point four million. <laughs> so it's still more than the Emmys, but yeah, it's not I, doing good. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, it, it is the Oscars versus the Emmys. I personally, I like the Emmys way more than I've ever even liked the Oscars. I mean, it's Oscars was a fifty. Oscars fell fifty six percent. That's crazy. Especially after that uh, that stunt they pulled with Chadwick Boseman. That was terrible. And honestly, I feel like the Emmys kind of echoed that with um, um, Kenneth. With what? With, um, with um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on his name. I'm so sorry. Recently just passed away. He was in um, Lovecraft Country, The Father. Michael K. Williams. Michael K. Williams, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I feel I okay. They didn't do the exact same thing at the Emmys, but it was a little bit. I was like, okay, I I feel like he kind of. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it here in a bit because it was like the the presenters would would say some words about him, but they didn't really give any official like anything like words about his passing. No, they didn't. It took and, somebody doing that on their own, right? It, it, they didn't do like an in memoriam thing. It was kind of just a. You know, a few words here or there. That they, they did do in memoriam at the end, but oh, that's, those are always it. those are always weird and bad. Yeah, see, and I didn't realize that because I actually did. I I turned it off after a while just because I did have work early in the morning and I didn't want it. Like I, I, I mean, I was gonna, you know, it was more so when it came. I got like uh, maybe like three fourths through, so I didn't realize I did that. So thank you for letting me know. I'll, I'll definitely have to check that out. But it, this would have been nice to. I mean, if you're already bringing them up, you mind. Like, I'd rather have had that for Michael K. Williams instead of all the sketches that they did. Like, yeah, and if, then Norm McDonald as well. Yeah, both very recent. Right, correct. Like, I'd rather have had it for 
for Michael and Nora. If if they were going to set aside time for something, that's what it should have been. Because it's like, I mean, I get it. You know, it's all about you know Emmys and stuff. But it's like you know, you you kind of lost great coworkers, you know, in the process, and you know, you're never going to be able to speak to those people again. Um, so it's. That, that, that is one criticism I have of the Emmys. So that's more just personal for me, uh, just because it's, I just feel like it's the right thing to do. You know, like if this truly is a community of actors and actresses in, you know, just the, the whole celebrity shebang, like at least, I mean, I'm sure a lot of them did care. It's not like they could have like ran it themselves, but it would have been nice for the Academy to kind of do to, to kind of uh, have that in, have that in there, implement that into the, uh, into the program, but Hey, it's all right. You know, like we, uh, you know, we live and we learn, learn from mistakes. Hopefully next year will be a little bit better. Hopefully we don't lose anyone, uh, from coming up here. So that, that, so we, that we don't have to do that, um, anytime soon, but Devin, let's get straight into the, um, whew. Yeah, as far as, as far as these results go, I mean, pretty, <laughs> we, we need to, we only need to talk about like five or six shows and we have most of it covered. Pretty much. So I wanted to ask you really quick, Devin, did, have you started watching Ted Lasso season two? Cause not there's yet. only, there's only one, there's only one episode left. I believe. I have not yet. Devin, no, Devin, no, Devin. Anyway, but yeah. So honestly, just starting off from the bang, like they started off with the comedy series genre all, all together. Um, Hannah Waddington, uh, Waddingham, excuse me, <laughs> one for uh, uh, support actress in a comedy series. Like right off the bat, was Ted Lasso win. I was like, absolutely yes. They're playing the theme song. She gave a tremendous, tremendous speech. And then moving on to supporting actor in a comedy series, we have Brett Goldstein, Ted Lasso. We finally got to hear his real voice, Devin. I was like, because I always wondered, I'm like, does he actually talk like that, or is that just more of like his character? It was like night and day, dude. <laughs> I actually didn't pay attention that close to it, but really, oh yeah. man, it was cr- like Hannah uh, Waddingham. She she almost like broke into tears, like thanking Jason Sudeikis for like just making like it was a big turn for her career, like like winning an Emmy, like that's huge, like it's amazing. Yeah, yeah we, we can just stay on the the Ted Lasso train, and, and obviously Jason Sudeikis won for uh, best actor in a comedy series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, lead actor. Lena. And um, I believe it also won just best comedy series, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it it won up for yeah, it won outstanding comedy series. Yeah, outstanding comedy series, and then I believe they won eight awards all together. They were nominated for twenty, which was really funny how Liddy, Little Dicky came out towards the beginning, and he was like, "Oh, oh that's <laughs> great." Twenty nominations is too much. Yeah, no, that that was uh, fan freaking tastic. I'm um, trying to figure out what else between, because I I know they did some of the awards like early, like Wandavision won a few as well, but it was like a week ago. It was like I guess you can quote and say quote unquote. Yeah, Disney Disney did not do well as far as the main awards. No, it did not, not at all. But you know what did do well, Devin. Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> that makes no sense. How is it a variety special? You know Explain what? That. I was very confused about that as well, but I'm like, you know what? It's just the best of both worlds. It's just no, that I, good. I refuse. It should have been Bo or Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle's was really so good. good. I still haven't seen Bo Burnham's yet. I, it's been on my backlog forever. And honestly, I have no excuse but to watch it now. Um, I'm very surprised at the front re- the front reunions. And that's that I was kind of weirded out about this. The front reunion variety special was nominated, but not the Fresh Prince. That one was so much better than the Friends reunion. Like it was cool to see, like, you know, the gang back together, but like I didn't need like all, you know. They really did make it into like a special programming thing, but I just like the intimacy of um, the Fresh Prince reunion way, way more. Very surprised that Friends even got nominated, but Alexander Hamilton. So stupid. <laughs> it is a bit weird, but you know what? I'm I'm taking it as a win. Honestly, I am very surprised that Bo Burnham inside did not win because I've heard nothing but like crazy good things about it. Um, I 
I don't know. I really don't know what happened, but hey, man, it's <laughs> it's Hamilton all the way, I guess. But I, I feel like this is the end of the the uh, the Hamilton train <laughs> for sure, one hundred percent. But yeah, g- uh, moving on to uh, the Crown, they won a lot. Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you a second to talk about the Crown because I got nothing. Honestly, I have nothing either because I haven't really I haven't really watched it myself, and I mean I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt for not watching it, but I. It. I started watching the first season like a few years ago, and for some reason, I got distracted by something else, and I started watching it. But Olivia Coleman did win for lead actress in a drama series. They they just they just kept winning, and I was like, all right, all yeah. Right. Joshua all Connor right. for lead actor in a drama series. Um, also, we have. Whew, man, and I mean, in in, all, in outstanding drama series, The Crown won over. Um, I mean, The Boys was in there, Bridgerton, Mandalorian, Lovecraft Country, This Is Us, Handmaid's Tale, Pose. Honestly, all all great series that people should be checking out. Um, for the outstanding limited series, I'm very surprised that Mayor of Easttown did not win. I'm very surprised. I'm so happy. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not mad because I mean, I was, I was rooting for Queen's Gambit. And Mayor you know, did get, did get quite a few wins. I do, I probably will watch that eventually. Do uh, Devin, it's, it's there. They shoot on location in Philly. It's awesome. Like limited series. Evan Peters kills it, my guy. I'm telling you, that's the real Quicksilver. Yeah, <laughs> from Quicksilver. But yeah, I was surprised that uh, Queen's Gambit won over Mayor of Easttown. Um, and WandaVision, hey, it had a, uh, a nomination. I, mean, I wish I wish we got we got a little bit more WandaVision love in there, but that's okay. But I was but yeah, for Qu- Queen's Gambit to me was just, for me, it was an easy choice because they made chess interesting. Oh, they I really mean, come did. on. Like, they did. That's insane what they did with that series. I wonder how many people like, I, got it. I don't even know how to play chess. And I watched it and I was like... I was hooked immediately. I still don't know how to play chess, but it was amazing. <laughs> like the the like as you're watching the show, it makes you feel like you know how to play chess, and then when it's over, yeah. you're like, it also makes you feel <laughs> drunk and high, just like she is. <laughs> Dude, that first episode when she was a kid, she just threw. Them. <laughs> she just threw those pills, those green pills, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. But Anya yeah, Taylor Joy in, in a dress she designed herself. Yeah, I, oh honestly, boy. I'm glad that people still remember Queen's Gambit because I was af- I was kind of afraid that Mayor of Easttown or um, not even WandaVision, more so Mayor of Easttown, was going to overshadow Queen's Gambit. But I mean, hey, congratulations! You know, like it, it was definitely, and I was wondering if it got any uh, wins because. By that time when they did like the drama stuff, I kind of that's when I kind of uh, went to uh, like kind of uh, checked in for the night. But, you know, it is what it is there. Outstanding variety special. You know, it's Stephen Colbert's Election Night 2020 Democracy Democracy's Last Stand <laughs> Building Back America Great Again <laughs> Better 2020, <laughs> which was really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, um, I guess it's going back to the crown, you know, they, they, they killed it in those, in those categories, but Kate Winslet did win for, um, lead actress in a, a limited series or movie. Honestly, she deserved it, dude. Like, like I, I mean, we love Elizabeth Olsen we love Anya Taylor joy, but I, when I tell you Kate Winslet killed it, dude, it was freaking insane. And then, um, Again, for Queen's Gambit, uh, for outstanding directing, uh, Scott Frank for Queen's Gambit. That, so. one, that was an interesting acceptance speech he gave. I did he not see kept it. kept going. <laughs> oh, really? He got, the, he got that rap of music, and he was like, I'm, I'm still going. I'm almost done. <laughs> I, I do feel like when it comes to the acceptance speeches, like it's weird how they try to rush people off stage for like their acceptance speeches, but then they just wanna... to get to another sketch. Yeah. Just to get to, yeah. Just to get to another sketch. I was just about to say, and uh, speaking of sketch series, uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday night live. Yeah. One. Two options. It was real, real tough. competition. <laughs> yeah. Black lady, uh, sketch show and Saturday night live. I mean, Saturday night live has been, They've just been going forever. It's insane. I, I will say I'm sad that I think you should leave by Tim Robinson wasn't nominated. Really? It's on Netflix. Is it? Okay. A sketch do. series. I'll have to check that out for it's sure. Very weird and strange and amazing. <laughs> 
That's funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, the crown, like, it just continues to dominate. Tobias uh, Menzies for the crown for supporting actor. Uh, and then the the other show that kind of got a few awards in here that I've mm-hmm. I've heard rumblings of, but don't know anything about is Hacks. Yeah, Hacks I've got heard. some love for comedy. Yeah, I actually have to check that out. I don't know what that's um, what that's on. To be completely, I honest. believe it's HBO. Is it really Hacks? Okay. Uh, see, like, and that's what I love about the Emmys. It's like even if you if you're looking for a good TV show to watch, like there's so many out there, regardless if they've been nominated or not. Like, I mean, these, like all these shows that have been nominated are like just so freaking good, but it's like, you know, with, um, I mean, lock and key is getting a second season, actually getting three seasons because they, I think, I believe they filmed season two and season three back to back with Amelia Jones from uh, Coda as well. Cause she's, she's in that as well. So that's that kind of prompted me to start watching that. I'm like, wow, you know, I really like her acting style, like what she did in Coda. Let's see what else she's in. But um, it like a lot of these uh, shows out there, it's there's just so many. Like, I mean, even the new iCarly revival is really great. You know, that follows the more traditional, um, the uh, traditional uh, sitcom route. We have Doom Patrol season three coming out. I've I've uh, seen the first five episodes of that. You can catch my review over on MusicCityDriving.com. Um, as well as in Titans is out. It's, it's, it's pretty decent this, this time around, but there's so many other TV shows out there that didn't really make the cut um, from the, the Emmys, but it, it's really, it's TV has been thriving so much since the pandemic. I mean, a few hiccups here or there that we've seen with, um, you know, being pushed back, but it, it really is just thriving. I mean, like as much as I love movies, I think TV is more so, I, I think it speaks to me just a little bit more just because, I mean, I did watch a lot of movies growing up, but like I watched so much TV growing up, like just in between, you know, like all my extracurricular activities from school and whatnot. It was just, it's, there, there's nothing better than a good TV show that you can just go back and revisit. You know what I mean? It's great yeah, stuff. Just like uh midnight mass. Got to dive back in tonight, dude. I'm telling you, man, Woo, man, like, I mean, I knew it was going to have like those haunting vibes, but it is just, it's not like, you know, like, like I can't even get into it, but <laughs> because of the, I'm, I'm telling well, the you, you have, to watch, you have to watch Hill House. I'm telling you. Oh, I'm, I'm going to, so I'm good. going to watch Hill House and I'm going to watch Bly Manor this spooky season, 2021. Yes. <laughs> those are going to be my two. I might, I was thinking about going back into uh stranger things just because I, Oh, I miss it so much. But I might have to watch Fear Street again as well. So we'll have to wait and see there. But was there any other, uh, I guess, really quick, you know, we've kind of been talking about all the uh, the winners. Were there any snubs that you think should have won for any of these categories? Um, or anything you would have liked to see? I mean, I know it's kind of I mean, a, the Hamilton. The Hamilton one was was the big one. <laughs> Just, what are you doing Hamilton. here? Hamilton. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm classic, s- vari- sex, classic variety. I'm so giddy that it was special. (laughs) I I texted Jacob because I knew he was mad. He was pushing for Bo Burnham. I texted him a gif uh, this morning. Like, hey, man, you watched the uh, you watched the Emmys last night? You know, know? (laughs) he was like, yeah, I I did. But hey, all I'm saying, I, I, I will say this to the day I die. The Disney Plus version of Hamilton is a movie. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and it, yes. I guess it's that good that it snuck its way into the Emmys. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I, I guess, I guess I'll throw out there. I do wish speaking of Lil Dicky, like you mentioned before, I wish Dave got some love in the comedy Dave, categories. I totally forget. See, I, you've watched Dave. You're like up to yes. date on Dave. Yes. I am not. <laughs> I do. Me, me and my dad have watched all of it. Really? We love it. That's awesome. You know what? Atlanta has Atlanta been coming out. Cause I know that, um, I know they've been, they're, they're doing, um, back. They're filming back to back seasons. I think it starts next year. I feel like that's smarter for a lot of TV shows to do. Cause that's what lock and key is doing. Like I yeah. mentioned earlier, So I think three and four, three is coming out next year. I think. Yeah. That's, that's very smart for them to do because especially with this COVID stuff, it's like, Let's get in as many seasons as we can, at least two. And then you're, you're good for, for at least the next two to three years, depending on, you know, when, um, you know, everything's re- uh, ready, like post editing and production and whatnot. So um, I guess I would say for um, 
from uh for Michael K. Williams, I, I kind of wish he he would have won in that category. Um yeah, he Lovecraft. was he was for the supporting actor, and it was for a drama series. Who was it? It was Tobias uh uh Menzies for the crown. I, I really wish it would it would have been Michael K. Williams because he he gave such a great performance as um as Atticus's father. And it's just, I mean, Gene Carla Esposito, it, it was just cool. Like, I know Mandalorian is not going to win, but I love it how it gets nominated like every single year. It's just like, you see that, you see that, uh, you, you, you see him in, uh, in, in the suit and, you know, the, the theme song just playing. It's like, yeah, like you just kind of get back into it. But uh, back to what I was saying with Michael K. Williams, I, I really, it, it, it should have been him. Like it, it really should have. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure Tobias does a fantastic job with the crown. Like I said, it's probably the number one most watched uh, TV show as of right now, because so many people get into that. That and honestly, Handmaid's Tale, which I've been meaning to get into as well. But um, yeah, um, yeah, I really, really wish Michael K. Williams would have would have won. And, um, you know, definitely be, you know, this won't be the last time we're going to be talking about him for for sure. But I think that was like the biggest snub outside of. I guess you can say Bob Bo Burnham and Alexander Hamilton, <laughs> but um, yeah, I I really wish they would have shown some like no love for Lovecraft Country whatsoever. Like I wish it would have won something. They, they at least got nominated. Yeah, which is really really good. But like it it sucks is this is the first and last time it's ever going to be nominated because they're not doing a season two. So so dumb. It's so stupid. Like I'm. Ugh. Like I'm, I'm very, very disappointed that they're they're not doing a season two. Like, I mean, like, yeah, the show has its issues. Like every show does, but it's like they had a really great concept. And Misha Green, it sounds like she knew exactly what she wanted to do with season two. And for you know, they just decided not to go through with it. I mean, it kind of sucks. It really, really does. Uh, but. Then again, like, what would the show be the same without Michael K. Williams as well? Because I'm sure that she had a lot of plans for him. You know, he's Michael K. Williams has been big for you know the Wire. He's he's he is like so deeply ingrained into like HBO's DNA that it's it's crazy. He's, he's part of what many believe is the best show of all time, The Wire. Yeah, yeah. Like, I have you seen The Wire? I have not. I have not either. There's, I, a, there's a lot. Yeah. A lot of hours in that one. How many episodes? I mean, how many seasons is it? Do you know? It has to be, find at, out. Has to be at least eight or nine. I'm I'm imagining at least eight or nine seasons. But you know, really, really, it's it it just really sucks that we we uh we lost Michael K. Williams so so soon. Honestly, he was like what 55 years old. Um, which really is just I mean, yeah, like he's seen some years, but like was not even done through living like the rest of it out his career. Like we, we it was actually five seasons, 60 episodes. <sighs> wow. Oh my gosh. 60. Ep- okay. Five seasons, 60 episodes. Okay. So 12 episodes a season. That's basically. not terrible. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I, it, is, I, it is 60 hours basically. I mean, I'm guessing I do that with game of Thrones on the, on the daily. So, <laughs> Man, oh man, we get no more Game of Thrones. At least for now. Uh, at least for now, we got uh, we got a lot of Game of Thrones stuff coming up. And I imagine, you know what? Just really, really quick, Devin. Like between the TV shows, you think that are going to kind of take off within the next few years. The ones, that, the ones that we see that we've seen. Do you think any of them? I it, this is just like a super crazy, wacky prediction. Do you think any of them could make it? to winning the Emmys, like between like Game of Thrones. Personally, I think the last of us is going to sleep when it comes out. I know that is super, super premature to say, cause we know a little bit, but we do know that Neil Druckmann actually came out and supposedly he's going to be directing some of the episodes as well. But I feel like when it comes like what show is going to be like the next crown, like the next Game of Thrones, that is what people are definitely looking for is it Ted lasso maybe i don't know but well what do you think is going to be like the next crown or like the next h uh game of thrones or the next sopranos even i have no idea <laughs> it's, kind, it's kind of the beauty of tv it could be any it could be anything yeah i i and that's what i love about it and i it's 
it's not the fact that, you know, people are recreating. I mean, we also have like the Amazon TV show coming out. So I think that's fantastic. Um, I will say, I feel like with the Emmys, I feel like they should throw a little bit of a, uh, some uh, animated goodness in there, but I guess none of the animated shows have really kind of uh, lived up to that potential. Like, I mean, depending on how like invincible goes, I think that can, I, I hope one day it could at least like, even if it just like gets a nomination, that would be a win. It would be fantastic. But you know, we've been talking here about the Emmys here, the, uh, the 2020 uh, Emmy winners here for a bit, but like I said, again, you guys, you know, everyone's out there, you know, it like as much as Bo Burnham, you know, probably honestly did deserve to win. Um, and it's category that it does not take away from, you know, the, um, the, the hard work that, you know, him and his team put in, it doesn't make that his work less important. Um, none of these TV shows are less important just because they didn't win because honestly, they're all great in their own way. And, you know, some, some people just might be appealed to one or two. Maybe you're just more of a Ted Lasso fan and Hey, you know, like good on Ted Lasso for winning so many awards it, it, deservedly. So, cause it is such a great heartfelt TV show that I feel like a lot of people need in their lives right now. But, um, you know, just congratulations to all the winners, like 100%. It's very, um, get the nice little, woo. <laughs> got to start using that a little bit more, but it's, it's been a while. I, I got to pick up some new, some new tricks there but um yeah that pretty much concludes our episode here over on the film optics podcast Devin, did you have well actually really quick before we get out of here how would you rate the emmys i almost forgot to ask you how would you rate the emmys before we get out of here oh it's tough it's it it's just so long i would give it about probably like for like longevity and the pacing probably like a c I'm like, go D. <laughs> I was maybe it just drags on. Yeah, I would give maybe like a the highest I ever probably give is like maybe like a C plus, but definitely just it's it's time to trim the fat, y'all. It really, really is when it comes to a lot of these things. Like just and we don't want it just to be as fast as like the nominations. Nominations only last like 20 seconds, but it's like if you're going to pace out these shows, like hour and a half, two hours max, no more than two hours max, but an hour and a half at like the least, maybe, or hell, if you can do it in an hour, excuse me, pardon my French, but if you can do it in an hour, that'd be awesome. But it's kind of like a little silly for people to, you know, asking people to fly in, you know, for a war ceremony that's only like an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So I probably will say around just two hour mark, it's time to trim that back. Because if we go back and kind of like trim out, if someone makes like an edit as to like what the, <laughs> what it actually should have been and ends up being like an hour and a half, maybe two hours, I think they have some things they need to uh, reconsider for next year. But yeah. So you heard it here first. Devin will give it like a D. I'll give it like eh, maybe probably like a C, C minus, C plus, somewhere in there uh, for the ratings for the 2021 emmy award aka the 73rd emmy awards uh yeah it's like i said before it's a great time to uh, get into tv there's a lot of great shows out there i don't want people to miss out you know I, I don't want people to get on the train too late when it comes to a lot of the stuff but it is what it is but that pretty much concludes our episode here for today um whew, man oh man it's been a long long day but i think it's been a really really good episode here on the uh, film ops podcast, you know, we talk a little bit of star Wars, some Emmys and whatnot, but what's coming up on the podcast, what's coming up on the show for everyone to listen and tune into. We have Marvel's what if episode, is it seven, eight, 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 seven, seven. Is it seven? Maybe it's either seven or eight. What if, next one has Thor. <laughs> He's going to be the next uh, person, uh, uh, character that they kind of hearken on. So that episode is going to be dropping attentively on uh, September 22nd. We have our Midnight Mass limited series review dropping on September 24th. And we have our Dear Evan Hansen review. It's going to be dropping on Monday, September 27th. And then we have Venom dropping on October 4th, the Monday after it drops in theaters and so on and so forth. Devin, I'm not going to lie. 
October is probably going to be just as busy <laughs> as March. <laughs> Think about everything we have coming out. <laughs> Saints, many Saints in New York is coming out. I kind of want to watch that one. I don't know if we, if we should review it. I probably will watch it. Yeah. Despite never watching Sopranos. Well, it's it's a prequel, so it kind of. Yeah. I'm glad that it's a prequel and not a pro and not a prologue. But we have we have that. We have Venom. We have Dune. We have Halloween Kills. There's oh my gosh, what else is Bond? There? Yeah, James Bond. We have the Last Duel. I'm very excited to get into that one. I don't know if we'll review here in the podcast, but regardless, I'm going to be seeing that one. We have Last Night in Soho, Antlers, uh, Lamb, Mass, not Midnight Mass, Mass, which I think is a interesting concept. I think it's between the parents, um, the victim, the uh, the parents of a uh, mass shooting, and then the victims of. Uh, that mass shooting as well. Some kind of conversation looks wow. <laughs> very, very crazy. And then we also have the French dispatch. You remember that one? The French dispatch, Devin? It's crazy stuff. Good old Timmy. Old Timmy. He's gonna be in two. Did, did you ever watch uh did you ever watch you on Netflix? No, have you? I have. Is it good? Season three is coming out too. S- season three. Ooh. Yeah, it is pretty good. Is is it is it worth a watch? I would say so. See, th- th- this is how people learn about new TV shows. Or, or honestly, just getting a t- into a TV show that you never really thought you were going to get into prior. But yeah, I, it's kind of got life. It's kind of got lifetime vibes, but it's on Netflix, so they kind of <laughs> burstened it up a bit. He said lifetime vibes. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, oz- honestly, what's also interesting that new uh, Hulu uh, Monkey Fist, whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jason Sudeikis. Hit monkey. Yeah. See, he's he's blowing up. And I'm I'm hoping all of the actors and actresses from uh Ted Lasso blow up as well because it's it could be a huge career changer like for them. It's it's crazy. I think Jason Sudeikis was, was actually in Book Smart, was he not? I think he was the uh yeah, he was the principal. Yeah, the principal, that's right. <laughs> I was like, that's where I remember him from. But Man, oh man. All right, Devin, let's get out of here again. Thank you so much for coming on. You know, I thank you every single episode, but it's, you know, definitely could not do any of this without you, man. It, it's been a long, crazy trip for us. So <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. It's been a lot, a lot of fun. And like we said, you know, keep a lookout for us all over on, uh, on, yeah, my gosh, over on Instagram and Twitter, uh, mainly Twitter, just because that is where I've been trying to be more um, <laughs> active on the Twitter page. That definitely starting using a little bit more. So it's it's hard, you know, balancing between three uh, accounts, more so two. But it is what it is. But Devin, let's get on out of here. And that is a wrap for today, everyone. Thank you all for listening. And if you jo- enjoyed the show, we greatly appreciate it. Leaving us a five-star rating review on Apple Podcasts and follow us on Twitter and Instagram so you can stay in the know. That was Devin. My name is Christian, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.